For as long as I've been alive, Yamaha have produced the gold standard in beginner saxophones. Starting with this sax, the Yamaha YAS23, an instrument that started production over 40 years ago, the ergonomics and the build quality of the Yamahas have always been second to none in the entry level category. As the premium option amongst other beginner saxophones, the value proposition for anyone looking to purchase a Yamaha is simple. Pay more money, but get a better quality saxophone. And there's no doubt that even today, Yamaha are still making fantastic entry-level saxes. But how much extra should you pay for a Yamaha over a low-cost alternative? Double the price? Triple the price? Quadruple the price? In this video, I'll be comparing these three Yamaha saxophones. The YAS23, which you can still readily find secondhand today, the YAS26, which is the replacement of the 23, and the YAS280, which is an upgraded version of the 26. Interestingly, it's not officially sold in the US, but it is available in virtually every other country around the world. Now, quick spoiler guys, if you're buying a new entry-level Yamaha, this is actually the sax you want. Now, for those of you based in the US, I know that's a lot of you, stick around because not only am I gonna show you the best way to get your hands on this 280 model, I'm also gonna talk through the pricing of these instruments because I gotta say, at least in the US, it makes absolutely no sense at all. But before we get into it, if you're a complete beginner on the saxophone and you're not sure where to start, you know what to do. Check out lesson one of the Sax Tuition Beginner Series. It's got everything you need to get started on the saxophone. There's a link to it in the description down below. Plus, why not take this opportunity to subscribe to Sax Tuition on YouTube so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. It's a great way to support the channel and it's 100% free. So what's not to like? Well, let's get into it. Now let's start by looking at the YAS23. I'm not gonna spend too much time going through every aspect of this sax, but if you are interested in an in-depth review, you can check out the review video I made right here, where I outlined why I think this model could rate amongst the most legendary saxophones ever made. These models were made in Japan, and that's significant because this is where Yamaha built their legendary reputation for manufacturing and quality control. It's lightweight, ergonomically it feels really nice to play, it plays in tune, and it plays with a lot of clarity and projection. It nails just about everything you want in a beginner sax, and even more incredibly, it did it 40 years ago. That being said, look, it's not 100% perfect either. You'll notice on the left hand table, it's quite difficult to quickly transition between B and C sharp and B flat and C sharp. That's because when you press those keys, it creates a gap and makes it quite difficult to roll your pinky finger across. So if you've got slender fingers, you might find that your pinky finger slides right into that gap instead of transitioning to the key that you actually want. The octave key also has quite a strange design to it that I've never really seen on any other sax. On the YAS23, your thumb actually connects with the part of the key that's closest to the hinge. It's the least responsive part of the key. Somehow though, it still works, but it also seems quite inefficient and a little counterintuitive from a design perspective. You'll also notice there's no high F sharp key on these saxes. Honestly, for me, it's not a make or break feature though. You can still play a high F sharp using your front F fingering, which I tend to prefer anyway, but perhaps if you are really wanting to become a serious classical sax player, the lack of high F sharp key could be a consideration for you. The other thing to note is the case on these instruments is fairly basic. It's a simple, hard case. It's sturdy, but they don't have shoulder straps or have a sleeve to put your music books in, which, especially for a child learning sax, can actually be a big drawback. So how does its replacement, the YAS26, compare? Well, it's still the same basic design as the YAS23. It should be noted, however, that this saxophone is now manufactured in Indonesia. Now, some people might make a bit of noise about that, but in my experience, these Indonesian-made saxes still live up to the legendary Yamaha reputation 
for quality control. You'll notice they've redesigned that wonky octave key to be in line with what you get on other modern saxes, and they've made a couple of improvements to that left hand table. Notice how the low B flat key now has a curve to it. So when you press the low C sharp, you can actually still roll onto the B flat. Rolling back up to the C sharp is a bit trickier though, but it's certainly not impossible either if you make a rocking motion with your finger. As a side note, many professional saxophones get around this issue by introducing a seesaw mechanism between these two keys. Yamaha actually include it on their pro model saxes, but even the Jean-Paul AS400, a sax you can pick up for around 600 bucks, includes it also. It's funny, you know, when you compare beginner saxes to pro saxes, and even beginner saxes to other beginner saxes, how much of the ergonomic improvements are based around that one little left hand table. Now Yamaha say they've also improved the neck receiver and made a more durable screw on this model. And certainly if we compare it to the YAS23, I can see a difference. Mind you, I never really had a problem with the neck receiver of the YAS23 anyway. The only other new inclusion on this sax is an adjustable thumb rest, but for the vast majority of people, you won't really want to move it anyway. And here's why. If you hold your hands out in front of you in a totally relaxed, neutral position, just like this, you'll notice your thumb should basically be in alignment with your index finger. Then if you look at the default position of the thumb rest, you'll notice that it should be in alignment with the F key, which is where your index finger goes. So in almost every case, adjusting the thumb rest from its default position would actually lead to a less comfortable playing position. Now, apart from the differences I've already mentioned, basically every single thing about this YAS26 is the same as the YAS23. It's got the silver colored nickel keys set against the gold lacquered body, which is a subtle indicator that it's the base model sax that Yamaha makes. There's still no F sharp key and the case it comes in is completely unchanged with no additional pockets or shoulder straps to speak of. So all in all, you're getting a great saxophone here. Whether it's a great sax for the price you pay though is a totally separate question. And I'll be answering that in just a few moments. Now, before we chat about the price and you hear a side-by-side -side comparison of these saxes, there is one more sax we need to look at, the mysterious YAS 280. Now, for most of the world, the 280 is not a secret at all. It's officially listed on the Yamaha saxophone catalog and you can pick it up from any local Yamaha dealer. But in the US, it's like this saxophone doesn't exist. It's not listed on the Yamaha website. It's not available through Sweetwater, Woodwind Brasswind, or Sam Ash, or any other Yamaha dealer. Across the border in Canada though, no problem. You'll find it in all the usual places. So what makes this saxophone so different? Well, firstly, it does look a bit different. Instead of the nickel keys you'll find on the other two saxes, this model is completely covered in gold lacquer. So it blends in a little more with their pro level saxes. Secondly, you'll notice this sax comes equipped with a high F sharp key, another nice inclusion for some players. And thirdly, this sax comes with a really nice case. It's got an external pocket, optional shoulder straps, two carry handles, and despite the fabric covering, still has a really firm, sturdy construction. So essentially, the YAS280 is like the YAS26S. It's the same saxophone, but it addresses practically all of the drawbacks of that previous model. And to be honest, there's not too much left separating this saxophone from a professional model. Now, before we talk price and we talk about where the most value is in this Yamaha lineup, we need to take a break for what we've all been waiting for, the sound comparison. So let's check it out. Thank you. 
Now, earlier in this video, I mentioned that the pricing of these Yamaha sax phones in the US makes absolutely no sense. Well, I'm actually gonna go one step further and say, guys, you're actually getting ripped off. Now, let's start by looking at the Australian prices. Over here, or should I say down under, you can pick up a YAS23 for around 850 Australian dollars. That's just under 600 US dollars. The YAS26 is sold at most Yamaha dealers for 1,495 Aussie dollars. That's just over a thousand American dollars. And the YAS280 you can pick up for 1,739 and that works out to about 1,200 US dollars. Now looking at that spread, I'm not sure about you guys, but to me, it looks about right. There's obviously a lot of money to be saved going with the secondhand YAS23. And you know, if you do that, you're still getting a great sax. Between the two new saxes for an extra 200 bucks, you're essentially getting a nicer case, a high F sharp key, and arguably a nicer looking saxophone. Seems to me like a pretty straightforward upsell. So what's going on with the American pricing? Well, the YAS23 seems to go for much the same price as you can get it in Australia, or perhaps even a little cheaper. It's around 500 US dollars. That seems to be the average based on what I've seen. The YAS26 though, what on earth is happening here? At the time of making this video, the YAS26 is selling for a whopping 2,428 US dollars. And guys, that's without sales tax. Worse still, it's not just one retailer bold enough to sell it for that price. Sweetwater, Woodwind Brasswind, even the Yamaha stockists on Amazon are all selling it for that same price tag. Now I did reach out to Yamaha to get clarification about the US pricing and they did inform me that the American YAS 26s actually come with diamond encrusted keys and a solid 24 karat gold neck. So all in all, it's actually not a bad deal. I'm kidding guys. I reached out to Yamaha, unfortunately they didn't get back to me and I can't find any reason why those 26s are so damn expensive in the US. Even if you love the sax, there's absolutely nothing to justify a 137% increase on what you can pay for the exact same sax virtually anywhere else on the planet. What's strange is as an Australian, I'm actually used to being the one getting ripped off. It feels strange somehow being the one who's getting a better deal. So with all of that being said, we need to look at the YAS 280. We know of course, it's not officially sold in the US. We also know it's a straight upgrade on the 26. It is a 26, just with a few extra features. So if all the usual outlets won't sell it in America, where do you go? Well, Toman Music have it listed for sale on their website for a mouth-watering $869. But when you try to check out with it in the US, you're met with this depressing message. There is, however, another way. There are a couple of sellers on Amazon selling it for $1,329 with free shipping to the US. Now, I don't know how they're getting away with it. I really hope I haven't just blown their cover. But if you're in the US and you wanna pick up this saxophone for yourself, I've put an Amazon affiliate link to the sellers who will ship this sax to you in the description down below. For $1,329, that's right around the price that you'd pay in Australia or most other countries around the globe. So to wrap things up, here are my recommendations on these Yamaha saxes. The YAS23, it's a legend. It'll always be a legend. And if you want a tried and tested saxophone to start off on, you're on a bit of a budget and you don't mind getting something secondhand, you really can't go wrong with this sax. Out of the new saxes, I think you probably know what I'm gonna say. Unless you have a very specific budget in mind, don't bother with the YAS26. If you can, get the YAS280 instead. My justification is this. If you're already committed to paying extra for a quality instrument, the kind of instrument that Yamaha makes, why not pay an extra couple of hundred bucks for an instrument that really doesn't have any major drawbacks at all? And if you're in America, guys, under no circumstances can I really justify spending almost two and a half thousand dollars 
for a saxophone that really should cost 1100 bucks. Of course, that's not me saying it's worth 1100 bucks, that's Yamaha saying that based on what they sell it for in every other country around the globe. Well guys, I'd love to know what you think about this whole Yamaha situation. Do you play a Yamaha sax? Which model do you think sounded the best? Leave all your comments and questions in the comment section down below. If I hear from Yamaha or get any other interesting pieces of information, I'll be sure to share it with you. Keep in mind, if you want a brand new sax and you want it around that $600 mark, you should check out my review of the Jean-Paul AS400. I'll pop it right up here for you. And if you're looking for a course that will teach you every note on the saxophone, how to get a great sound, how to read sheet music and how to play beautiful melodies, check out the Sax Tuition Beginner Series. It's got 12 lesson videos, over 200 demo tracks and a 68 page ebook that will help you conquer the saxophone from scratch. As I mentioned at the top of this video, you can watch lesson one right here on YouTube or if you're ready to dive in and get the complete course, head on over to saxtuition.com or use the link below. Well, thanks again for watching guys. Make sure to click like on this video if you found it useful and subscribe to the Sax Tuition YouTube channel for more great saxophone content. And I'll see you all again soon.